During this COVID experience, one of the most heartwarming surprises that I discovered, and I suppose I had learnt it many times before, but it was a, a refreshing experience, was just to discover that help often comes from the unexpected or what we might otherwise call the hidden people. This can be both an encouragement and a rebuke. Why we feel moved to act depends on lots of different things. It could be an overwhelming sense of need. We may be caught up in the emotion of the, the moment. As uh, I was watching the toy, sto- the toy program with Ryan Tuberty in the Late Late Show, and you know, after they tell all these stories about children and specific needs at this time of the year, it would be a very hard person that might not feel moved to, to help in some sort of small way. Or it might just be a sense of guilt. And sometimes guilt is quite a good thing. Yes, because if it's real guilt, it is because of some real particular issue. Or it may be just thanks for how blessed we know ourselves to be. And out of the overflow of thanksgiving, we just want to bless other people. Yet, we don't always act, and we don't always act in a way that is honouring to God. Have a look at scripture, and there we often see that God moves the most unlikely of people. Listen to these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Do you know, so many people can feel inadequate. You know, they feel it. What have I to offer? And in the face of need, even though it may be great need, they feel, well, I mean, I'm really a very small person in this and my contribution would make such a little difference. Why would I even bother? Or maybe, you know, those people have so much. They're, they've got all these other people involved in their lives. My, my doing something would be so unimportant. They're okay. Do you know, I'm sure you know as well as I do, even as you're listening to me, you're saying, no, 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 that's not true. Because so often we find ourselves with great needs, not massive needs, but just the general need for friendship or encouragement. Just the simple things, not big things. And anybody can really help in those ways. And God does choose the small. Those who are seldom noticed by the world that they live in, maybe not even noticed by their own families or communities. You take a little look at scripture and see how true that is. Think about people like Joseph. Joseph's brothers despised him. They they, they wouldn't even speak a nice word to him. And we know how they treated him. They sold him as a slave. And we know there was a great purpose in that. But God was doing something. God had a great purpose for Joseph. And we know that that was to preserve his people through their time in Egypt. But then think of David. Remember whenever Samuel the prophet went to anoint the one member of the family of Jesse's household and all these great big strong men come before him and, you know, Samuel saying, ah, there he is there, that big one with muscles as mighty and a chest as big and so forth. No, the Lord said, not one of these. He says, I don't look at people on the outside. I judge by the heart. And so eventually it was the youngest the one who was disregarded, disregarded and even despised, he was chosen. Surprised everybody. David, who's the one from whose line comes the, the Messiah. Wow. Or look at Ruth. In the little book of Ruth, the story all about Ruth and how God used her life and her, her character, her graciousness and all sorts of things to bring her into the place where she would also become part of the line of the Messiah. The Moabites, the widow, the outsider, the poor, who will find herself eventually in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or what about Hannah? Hannah, the barren woman, taunted and mocked every day by the other wife, Peninnah, 
You read about her in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And how this woman, so despised by others, and in her own heart feels so crushed, and so useless, and so, in a sense, regarded as as unimportant, the Lord chooses to use her. But when you move into the New Testament, and at this Advent season, isn't it so amazing that most of the account of the very incarnation, the coming of Christ, God coming in flesh, it has to do with taking ordinary people. Think of Mary, a teenager, not some celebrity family of Nazareth, humble, unseen, unknown. Or even the disciples from the ordinary stock of folk. God chooses and God uses the ordinary so that God can make his own name known so much more. Do you know, in recent times, there's been a sort of a worrying increase in what we might call celebrity Christianity. A kind of a sense in which many Christians feel or find themselves sucked into the world of social media. How many likes do we get? Even we put something up on Facebook, how many likes do we get there? How many friends do we have? Now we've even got a whole new category of person. You don't have to do anything. You become an influencer through various means. And sometimes, sadly, this type of celebrity Christian is fueled even by the Christian community itself. You know, honour is a good thing, and we thank God for the gifts of others. And we try to do it in a way that glorifies God and really blesses them. But too much elevation can be very dangerous in those environments, the public media world, and could very well verge on idolatry. Paul would never have anything to do with that. Do you remember how in Acts chapter 14, and if you don't know it, turn it up in the Bible and read it. Paul and Barnabas have been in Lystra and Derby. God uses them to perform a real miracle, not the sort of thing that many celebrities could do, I can assure you, but a real miracle. And on account of that, the people want to worship them. They want to offer up sacrifices to them. And Paul tears his clothes and he rushes out into the middle of the crowd of them and he says, look, and I quote from the Bible there, we are only men, humans like you. I suppose that's the rebuke side of this. So the encouraging side is, having said this, let me affirm the ordinary. How many quiet, humble, selfless people have been such a blessing, certainly over my life? People who will never get awards, they'll never be listed in the Queen's Honours list, they'll never never be regarded of the greats of society, and who, when their time comes to pass away, will most likely only have a quiet, humble moment for their family and a few friends. But you know, I think they shine like stars in the sky. God sees all their deeds of kindness, their acts of love for Jesus' sake, these gospel-hearted people. Well, I certainly rejoice in them. I can tell you that. As we learn to rejoice in our given place, and we're not afraid to bless others, just quietly and simply, We really are advancing the kingdom of God. So be encouraged. You may feel yourself to be small and unimportant in the big picture, but you are not small to God. You are important to him. And the things that you can do in the quiet, humble way can be just the very things that make his name great in those settings. So let's be encouraged today. and. Let's be cautious a little bit about elevating people sometimes. And let's elevate the Lord Jesus above everything else. And let's have a really good day. And the Lord bless us.